Thanks for tuning in. I'm Donnie, and today I'm going to tell you five things that I wish somebody had told me before my first hair scramble race. So let's jump right in. Number five, don't wear new gear. You'll always need proper gear to race, but don't wear new gear for the first time during the race. You never really know how your gear is going to fit or perform until you spend time riding with it. For example, you don't want to find out 20 minutes into a race that your new elbow guards are constantly sliding down off your elbows or that your new boots make it difficult to use your rear brake. In my first race, I wore a new hydration pack with a bite valve that was in line with the tube. It made it hard to position in my helmet, and after fiddling with it for a while, I just had to stop, pull over, and get a drink from it. Had I worn this prior to a race, I would have known that beforehand. When it comes to your pants and jersey, helmet, goggles, gloves, boots, wrist guard, neck brace, knee braces or guards, elbow guards, and any other gear you're wearing, you need to make sure it all works well together prior to a race. Number four. Focus on fitness and hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. If there's one thing that is more likely than anything else to prevent you from finishing your first race, it's probably cramps. Hydrating is extremely important, and if you ask 10 people, you'll get 11 different answers on what to do to hydrate and prevent cramps. For me, I drink fluids, but I've also found it's helpful to eat some salty snacks or drink some pickle juice prior to a race to help me retain fluids rather than just drinking a ton of water that goes right through me. The physical exertion of racing will be at least double what you're used to. Even if you train hard and you think you're prepared physically, the exertion of racing, especially for the first time, is hard to prepare for. The adrenaline will push you hard for the first 15 minutes or so and leave you drained when it wears off. At that point, you still have an hour and a half left of the race, and if you're not well hydrated, you won't be able to push through that and finish the race. Number three, ask for help. The people at the races will gladly help you. If you have questions about where to go or what to do, just ask others around you. The off-road racing crowd is made up of some of the nicest people you will ever meet. You may have questions about sign-up, race classes, start times, or you might have forgotten something important like tear-offs or an air pump. Just ask around. You will quickly find someone who will be more than happy to help. Before and after the riders meeting or when you're on the starting line, strike up a conversation with those around you. It will calm your nerves and you may get helpful information as well as make connections with others in your same class. Some guys may look very focused and serious, but it's likely they have the same butterflies you have. Taking a couple of minutes to talk about their bike is a welcome distraction. Number two, understand your goal for the race. If this is your first race, your primary goal should be to finish the race. Establish your own strategy and goal before the race and don't let anyone change it. For the vast majority of first time racers, finishing the race should be your primary goal. These races are long and you need to focus on putting down the best lap times for the entire race. It does you no good at all to put everything you have into the first lap if you can't maintain that pace for a full race. Maintaining consistent lap times is far better than putting everything you have into the first lap and then falling flat for the remaining laps. Establish a realistic goal for the race and understand your reasons behind that goal. You might be thinking, well, it's a race and my goal is to win. For your first race, that's not a very realistic goal. Even in a beginner or trail rider class, you need to ride consistently and be able to finish the race. And the number one thing I wish somebody had told me before my first hair scramble race is that starts don't matter. That's right, starts don't really matter. If it's your first race, or maybe even your first few races, starts don't really matter that much. A lot of people get so caught up in the race start process that they can't think clearly. It's been said you can't win the race in the first turn, but you can certainly lose it there. Imagine for a minute you're on the starting line, watching the rows in front of you leap. It's loud, dirty, smoky, and your adrenaline is pumping. You unloaded your bike an hour ago, and you haven't ridden in a week, maybe two weeks. You hear the 10 second call, everything gets quiet, and here comes the adrenaline. You can literally hear your heart pounding in your ears. The adrenaline clouds your judgment and narrows your field of vision. The flag flies, your bike starts, and you twist that throttle harder than you've ever twisted it before. For a first time racer, the likelihood of a bad outcome here is far greater than the likelihood of a good outcome. There are tons of spectators and cameras rolling for the start. The first possibility is you twist that throttle just a little bit too hard and too fast and loop the bike right on the starting line. It happens a lot, and there will definitely be videos. Another possibility is you get off the line, but you carry way too much speed in the first turn and crash there, maybe the second turn. Or maybe you get 100 yards into the woods and hit a tree because you're riding above your own limits. Now imagine another scenario that's the same as the first, but this time you've already decided to let the line go. You calmly wait as the 10 seconds count down, except you're sitting on your bike with your arms crossed, letting the chaos play out in front of you. The flag flies and the line leaves ahead of you. Once they're at the first turn, you crank your bike and start your race five seconds behind the field. You race your own race instead of being caught up in the first turn chaos. 
For a new racer, this strategy is very unlikely to affect the outcome of the race. For beginners, it's rare that 5, 10, or even 30 seconds makes a difference after two hours of racing. Later, when you've gotten more race experience, it's true that getting out in front of the pack on the start is an advantage, especially when conditions are dusty, but it's only an advantage if you can stay out front. As a new racer, understanding your abilities and your goal for the race is paramount to being successful and having fun. So those are the five things that I wish somebody had told me before my first hair scramble race. I also asked this question to the Southeast Cross Country Association racing community on Facebook, and I got well over 100 responses from very experienced racers. Here's some of my favorite responses, and I'll post all the responses in the video description, so be sure to check those out. If you've raced a hair scramble before, let me know down in the comments what you wish somebody had told you before your first race. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please click that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you.